In the news tonight, an Ambrose government commenced state police command for arrest and prosecution of wanted suspects. Residents of Anambra State cautioned against indiscriminate burning of waste materials and bushes. President Buhari calls for safe and inclusive digital world. On the foreign scene, Sudan security forces clash with protesters over increasing economic crisis. Good evening and thanks for joining us on ABS Television News. I am Franklin Onyekachi. Now the news in details. The Anambra State Government has commended the new Commissioner of Police in the state, Mr. Mustafa Dandara, for the arrest and quick prosecution of one Ikechuku Udensi, known as Ikanda, suspected of masterminding the killing of a 38-year-old businessman in Onicha, Ndubisi Ngokolo, last year. A statement signed by the State Commissioner for Information and Public Enlightenment, Mr. C. Donna Denoba, said the victim was allegedly killed for resisting an attempt by some criminals disguising as government revenue agents to extort money from a commercial motorcyclist. We have details. According to the statement, Governor Willie Obiano has written to the police commissioner to express satisfaction at how police officers in Onicha acted on a tip-off and arrested Udensi, who was in a secret location while waiting for his agents collecting revenues illegally to bring him money. It said the governor has carefully been studying the strategy which the Anambra State Police Command used to arrest this person on whom the state government placed a one million naira bounty uh, since last year, and impressed by the fact that immediately Kechuku Densi was arrested, he was taken to court to avoid any possible legal loopholes through which Udensi escaped from the law. The statement reported the information commissioner stating that Governor Biana believes that the arrests and quick prosecution of Udensi show that the new police commissioner in the state is here to work for the people and has consequently brought into the state government development agenda with made security of life and property the first cardinal objective of the current administration. He stated that Chief Obiano believed that Udensi would have been caught long ago if he had remained in Anambra after Mr. Ngokolo's mother, noting that Udensi's arrest and subsequent prosecution showed that the time is up for those who collect illegal revenues and make life unbearable for the people. Anambra State Government has extended a hand of partnership to private investors for reconstruction of facilities at Obunike Cave. Governor Willie Obiano, who stated this at Obunike Oyi Council area, said the state had completed the design for upgrading of infrastructure in the cave in order to meet global standards. He noted that the infrastructure, when upgraded, will attract more tourists and increase the state's internally generated revenue. The governor said that his administration embarked on reconstruction of many roads in Ubunike and has asphalted 80% of the roads and promised to install streetlights and other standard road furniture on the completed roads. The Managing Director, Anambra State Waste Management Authority, Aswama, Mr. Amechi Akora, has urged Anambra residents to avoid burning of waste materials or bushes in their areas in order to avoid endangering lives and properties. Speaking with newsmen in Oka, Mr. Akora pointed out that burning of waste materials was an offence against the law. We have details. Mr. Cora said the agency has sustained mass awareness against bushfires and burning of waste materials because they are against the law. He explained that Aswama law of 2015 stipulates that offenses such as doing anything that would threaten the environment or constitute blockage of drainage systems are perishable. The director stressed that residents should imbibe the right attitude toward waste disposal, noting that the agency had ensured that waste bins are placed in various locations to enhance waste collection. Mr. Cora condemned the attitude of throwing refuse in drainage channels, noting that the agency would sanction anyone caught in the act and enjoined all to bag their waste properly 
and dispose in waste bins for onward evacuation by the agency in order to maintain clean and healthy environment. Some communities in Aguata, Idemili South, Newi North, and Anambra East local government areas have failed the, failed the open defecation free ODF certification exercise conducted in the areas. The certification exercise organized by the Rural Water Supply and Sanitation Agency, RUASA, in collaboration with UNICEF, was held in Oka and lasted for a period of 10 days. Peter Uche has details. Speaking on the objectives of the exercise, Mrs. Olichu Wonko, the sanitation officer of Ruasa, noted that the essence was to successfully certify those communities that claimed to be open defecation free. She also noted that the exercise was aimed at strengthening the capacity of the 25 Sustainable Development Goals members on the revised open defecation free certification protocol. Also speaking, Mr. Clement Chigo, who inspected Oba in the Demili South Council area, noted that most communities had good toilets, but the major problem was lack of hand washing facilities. On his part, Mr. Felix Ude, who inspected in Demili South, observed that some communities like Dunuebo Nobi were ODF. In Oka, Ushe Ushe reporting for ABS News. President Buhari has called on world leaders to come up with proposals to create a digital world that is accessible, inclusive, and safe for all. He made the call in his keynote speech at the 2019 annual investment meeting AIM in Dubai today. President Buhari, in a statement by the Special Advisor on Media and Publicity, Femi Adeshino, said a certain level of regulation was needed to preserve the integrity of the digital economy. Acknowledging that digital globalization is transforming the world almost every day with innovations and transformative ideas, the Nigerian leader cautioned that the cyber world will remain a constant threat if left unregulated. He decried the use of the cyberspace to manipulate elections, subvert the democratic rights of citizens, as well as propagate violence. And in the world of business, the Nigerian Stock Exchange, NSE, has launched a comprehensive review of its rules to block loopholes being exploited for surreptitious trading in shares by directors and other insiders of booted companies. The review, which aims at tightening disclosure requirements for price-sensitive information and insiders' dealings, includes a specific direction on disclosure of directors' dealings in their own shares of the company and greater investigative mandate that enables the exchange to track history of such transactions. Sources say the review might not be unconnected with growing concerns over surreptitious trading by directors of banks in their shares without public filing of such transactions. Some commercial banks have shown considerable transactions on the shareholdings of incumbent directors. And on the foreign scene, security forces in Sudan fired tear gas at protesters in an attempt to break up a demonstration in front of the defense ministry in central Khartoum, witnesses said. The said security forces on pickup trucks were firing tear gas extensively as they charged towards the protesters who have been calling for resignation of President Omar al-Bashel amid deepening economic woes. According to witnesses, the army deployed troops around its headquarters in the capital and blocked several roads leading to the complex, where protesters have passed since Saturday. Tear gas fire this morning was felt by residents in an upscale cartoon district, some five kilometers away from the army complex. And on sports, Nigerians have been urged to be actively involved in sporting activities to promote healthy living. Speaking at Ankara the Great Academy, Mbaku, during her first inter-house sports, launching and presentation of her Achievers magazine, the director of the school, Comrade Okafor Rafael, noted that sports is a necessary activity for people of all ages, especially for children, pointing out that the exercise provides a variety of benefits aside physical fitness. Ushe Ushe has details. Comrade Raphael noted that children participation in sports can help build self-esteem, confidence and can motivate them 
to perform well academically. He explained that these inherent benefits motivated the management of the school to organize the sports festival and disclosed that it will be an annual event. We want to discover the inborn talent in the area of uh, sports. Uh, but the special grace of God is an annual event. So we are not stopping. The chairman of the occasion, Sebastian Mwachuku, lamented that most schools had abandoned the tradition of inter-house sports and called on schools within the state and environs to reintroduce the culture of sports, noting that it is a platform for the students to showcase their talents. The chairman pointed out that the essence of the magazine was to document the success of the first edition of the inter-house sports and promise its continuous production. A student to exercise their, whatever they have, to, to bring out their psychic power, something that God has built in them. It helped them to exercise at this beautiful loss of writing and all that. From primary school in this exercise, you will know what guy will be when he grows up. A staff of the school, Mrs. Neka Raphael, observed that the exercise had been a huge success, especially to the pupils, and hoped that the exercise becomes an annual event. In their separate remarks, two pupils, Master Anthony Chuku Jeku and Mrs. Chidebe Choma, expressed satisfaction with the program, noting that the exercise had been educative and useful. Other schools present at the event were El Gibo Unique International School Okudo and El Merit Jams Model School Iso and Ochia Inugbaku. We show, we show reporting for ABS News. With that sports report, we conclude tonight's newscast. But remember that you can follow news and programs on ABS from any part of the world by logging on to our website at www.absradiotv.com. Like us on Facebook at www.facebook.com slash absradiotv. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram at absradiotv. And to end the news, another look at the top stories. Anambra State Government has commended State Police Command for arrest and prosecution of wanted suspects. Residents of Anambra State have been cautioned against indiscriminate burning of waste materials and bushes. President Buhari has called for safe and inclusive digital world. And on the foreign scene, we told you that Sudan security forces have clashed with protesters over increasing economic crisis. And that's the news. Thanks for watching. I am Franklin Onyekachi, wishing you a pleasant night's rest.